Oh my goodness, what a weekend, I have to say. We're doing this on the fly, everybody. Let me do an audio check real quick. Super special, so. Dropping stuff left and right. Ah, uh, hang out a minute. Let's check on the, uh, let's check on the channel. How I look. I look okay. And survey says... Okay, hang on here. Just getting the audio right. Hang on here. Just a little tiny bit more. I hate having delays, so it's like you're sitting here going, okay, come on, where's the delay? I think we got it. I think we definitely got it right here. Yep, we do. We got it. We're good. We're good. How we doing, folks? Like I said, we're doing this on the fly. So, uh, it is your buddy, Mr. Maynard, and I have returned from a crazy, crazy weekend in Portland. And let me tell you, I had a fucking blast. So... Uh, we're just going to chill tonight, chat, see how things are going. Uh, so it was three days straight in Portland. I'll tell you how that all went. And then also as a bonus, last night I went to a venue and uh, got to see a really good old friend of mine. Uh, we're, we've been chatting a lot on Twitter and he was glad to see me and hopefully he'll be joining us as well uh, next year, which... There might be a next year. There, there, there's a good chance that I might be going back to this event. That's how good it was. So, how are we doing, folks? Are we are we doing okay? I haven't streamed for a couple days. And, uh, so, basically, this is just going to be just a chat stream, a chill stream. So, I don't mind talking to people here tonight. I want to see how everyone's doing. I see we got a little bit of a group tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and call one of them out because he is totally family to me now. John Blue Riggs. Use your John Blue Riggs. John Riggs himself is in here. John, buddy. Oh, if it wasn't for you, we couldn't have done this. I couldn't have done this. And let me tell you, thank you. Thank you so much, man. It means so much to me that you did this for me. You had me come out and experience this, and I will treasure this this weekend. You you are literally family to me now, and I am forever indebted to you. That means I have to send you a ton of ski. So let's let me explain the story real quick of, of this of this whole thing. So first off, let me switch over to my camera. Got a nice little camera set up tonight. So yeah, you get to see me tonight. Hello, hello from home. Hello from Belleville, outside St. Louis. So. Oh man, you can tell I'm. I, you can tell I'm exhausted. I'm. I'm still exhausted. I'm still in recovery mode. So, let's start with the story. How did this happen? Let's rewind back to March of this year. And basically, I got an invite out by my good friend Edie Sellers, who works for Game Hounds, who I used to do podcasting with, and she gave me an offer to go to PAX West uh, to enjoy PAX for the first time. But there was a catch. There was a catch. I would have a media pass for the weekend. However, I would have to work for the weekend, pay for my plane ticket, pay for my, pay for my share of the room, pay for my own food and all that. Didn't mind any of that, but I would have a media pass and I could, I'd have to do that. But the big kicker was I had to work. I had to do a lot of interviews and such, so who knows who that, how that would have been. But seeing how they did their PAX event, pretty much half the time they were drunk. Would have been pretty fun, but we'll put that on the list down the road to try. However, 
So I put a questionnaire up of going to PAX. Should I go to PAX or not? And sure enough, John extended out and said, Hey, no, 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 no. You shouldn't go to PAX. You need to come to Portland. And I'm thinking, Portland? What's in Portland? And he goes, the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. And he goes, it's the it's it's a big retro convention out there in Portland, Oregon. And let me tell you, it is pretty much the greatest one of all time. And for as long as I've known John now for two years, and we became really good friends after Missouri, Missouri Game Con 2, uh, and seeing him again in Mo Game Con 3, and just, we, we connected. We were, we were that cool. And... We start talking more about it, and he goes, he's showing, he's, he's explaining it, and I'm looking up things about Portland Retro Gaming Expo and, and getting more interest of it. When sure enough, he says, you know what? Pay for your ticket, pay for your admission, pay for your food, slip me a couple beers, and uh, you can crash in my room, free of charge. That was a no-brainer. It was completely a no-brainer. That night, after I said yes, which it took a day or two to think about it, I said yes, I returned the favor i said hey i'm going are you sure and he said yeah go for it so i went ahead and got my plane ticket i got my admission and had to wait six months seven months and let me tell you the weekend has been over and i'm st- i'm still in sensory overload oh my goodness oh my god and i just had a freaking blast so, I had to fly from here Friday to San Francisco. So, St. Louis, Lambert International to San Francisco. And then San Francisco to Portland. The flights weren't too bad. I flew United. I showed up at the convention, took the red tram down to uh, downtown. And uh, it was great. I, I walk in after getting my weekend pass. And uh, sure enough... Uh, He's right there, and I'm like, dude, you know, good to see you, man. And it just, he goes, what do you think? And I'm just looking at just the arcade itself. That's it. The arcade was only open on Friday. And holy moly, tournaments, open consoles are ready to play. A couple of vendors were open for sale. Uh, but free play arcade on hundreds of arcade games and pinball, which was a blast. But it got really funny, so... He goes, well, behind us, because he, he was on the wall side where it had a collapsible wall. He goes, this is the vendor side. It's not technically open yet, but I could sneak in. Come in, come on in here, because I was taking my luggage. He took my luggage over earlier, and then he goes, come on over and check this place out. So I got to hang with him for a little bit, and we walked around the vendor's booths, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And I'm just, the vendor's booth area is twice the size as the arcade. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. And just, whoa. Reggie shows up. Got to see my, my bro, Re- Reggie. And I got to give him some big kudos, too. Because later, Riggs had to take off. He wanted to go catch up with some people. I said, hey, don't let me stop you. Go ahead. I'll chill with Reggie. Cause it looks like he's going to chill here for a little bit. Because I just ne- I was I was a little jet lagged. I needed to relax a little bit. Uh, what's really cool is a little bit later, uh, the head coordinator, if I remember, was Leslie. She came up and she noticed I had a weekend pass and Riggs, I, I, I not Riggs, I, I said I was with Reggie, which cool enough, she goes, she go, uh, Reggie stepped up and stepped in and said, hey, let's go ahead and just swap it, swap him out for a VIP pass. So I had VIP access thanks to both Riggs and Reggie. Uh, so I had full access to this whole convention and it was, whoo, that just made it even 10 times better. So... Since I had that VIP access, I could walk anywhere in this in this whole convention without question. As long as I wasn't doing anything stupid, and I never did. I was very... I minded my P's and Q's and was super polite. So, um, got to catch up with a couple of people there, too. Uh, Adam from Video Games Dad Podcast was there. Uh, Benjamin was as well. Uh, got to play a couple of arcade games, which I start setting hot laps on one of my favorite arcade games of all time, Hard Driving. Yes, I'm a weirdo with hard driving. I have a fascination with low polygon racing games, but you know what? It's one of my favorite games of all time and holds a dear, dear special place in my heart because of how it taught me how to drive with a clutch. So if you never drove five speed, that was the game that 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 could teach you. So uh did I lose my audio? 
Or did I lose my... Did I lose my music? I don't know if I lose my music, but... I got a really cool synthwave, retrowave music going on right now. Why not? It, it's fitting. Because I, that's one thing I noticed with, with uh, Portland and... Supposedly the Portland Seattle is really big with synthwave. And it's like, oh, but that's a win for me. I'm there. I'm totally there. And I love synthwave. So we got to check out the whole place. And I know later uh, me, uh, Riggs, and Joe, we went over to Spirit 77. And Steve, uh, Steve Wright showed up as well. Steve. Steve is so cool. Ah! Oh, C Cody. There you are, buddy. What's going on, man? Ah, uh, Riggs, you finally appeared out of nowhere. You're like, oh, I can hear both. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I won't spoil the news yet unless you've already heard what's going on. But but we'll bring that up in a little bit for you, Cody. I, I oh, Dude, I am so happy for you. You and Kelsey. I am. I, I just wish I was there when it happened. I only I, I caught it later, but we'll come up to that later. So, um... Just, just overall, the first day was just taking in the arcade and and checking out the place. But uh, I know for sure, what was it, later that evening, I think what I remember left, because already I'm starting to forget a couple things, I do know... Uh, I do know later that evening was great. Uh, we were down at the bar... Oh God, that was my starstruck moment. That was so great because I was. We went with Steve Wright, and we were chilling with Reggie. We did a stream with him with X and and Joe and Ben and all of them. And that was a good time. And man, let me tell you guys about Steve Wright. Steve Wright is an incredible person as well. Very down to earth, very professional. And let me tell you, he he's he he sets it straight. And for as much as what he goes through and how positive his life is, it's it. This is a guy you need in your life. He is that nice. And I was still laughing when he showed up at the convention because he texted me because he said before I left he messaged me on Facebook. He goes, "Hey, give me your cell phone number so I can text you when I get there." So right when I I was outside of the convention at the time and he texted me, "Hey, I'm coming down. I'm at the. I'm I'm up the road. I'm coming down the road real quick." And I'll meet you there. Do you want to meet me up front? I said, hell yeah, sure. He shows up. And I had my weekend pass at the time, though. And sure enough, I'm like, well, you got to go get your pass, buddy, to get in. And he goes, oh, I got you. Don't worry about it. And uh, so he walks over. And I'm thinking, okay, he's going to go get his pass and all that. And he doesn't go to the VIP. He doesn't go to get the normal pass. He goes to media VIP. I was like, what is he doing? Sure enough, because he's a photographer. He's a professional contract photographer, uh, for especially for WWE, which is freaking amazing. Uh, <laughs> he comes back, and he's got a media pass. I'm like, how did you pull this off? I just take photos. That's all I do. <laughs> it's like, okay, come on, let's go. Just, uh, But let me tell you, he had a heck of a weekend as well. And seeing what he got just blows my mind. Oh, man. Oh, uh, Cody, I agree. 77 is really cool, but there was no service. I was even checking things at home, trying to get a hold of people at home here in St. Louis, back here in Bovo. And, uh, yeah, didn't have any cell, cell service in there. But I will say, the fish tacos were delicious. And uh, I will, if I ever go, if I do go back, that probably will be on my hit list. I will have to do that. So let's let's go back to where I was. And that was that evening after the stream we did with Reggie. Uh, everybody was downstairs in the bar. Oh, my God. I have the video up. It's on my Twitter feed. It's on my Facebook. I It was my starstruck moment. It's like I'm sitting there. Briggs is down there. Jason's down there. Kenzie's down there. Steve's down there. Pretty much the whole group with Reggie's group went down there. And and Riggs and Jason and and Drunken Master Paul. And we're all sitting there drinking. And it's like we're having beer and I'm I'm having a, a sour whiskey and all that to enjoy myself. And here comes here comes uh Pat Contry and Ian Ferguson. It's like, 
oh wow and here comes rue and norm and oh look here's ben heck and it's like pretty much everybody i watch on youtube's in the same room what is going on and so i still love the video i put up i just showed everybody talking we're all laughing and having a great time and i go yep we took over the bar and it's like that's another moment i, I will totally remember so at the end of it all i do remember going upstairs and uh we were we all went to bed and i think i was on i was at least on 25 hours straight i got up early that day uh got to the airport at 3 30 just about 3 30 and uh sure enough uh sure enough uh four o'clock tsa opened up then i took my flights and got there and then was did all this and i was in bed by 1 32 o'clock there which was basically i want to say 3 34 o'clock here so i was literally over 25 hours almost yeah it's it just i was way up too long that i was supposed to be but that was worth it so uh day two i still remember waking up at day two partially because i heard somebody i don't know if it was riggs or steve or joe i don't know who it was but uh, one of them said, hey, let's just leave Maynard here. He needs an extra hour of sleep. He's been he's been up for too long. And I think if I remember, I think I put my thumb up to thank them. I don't know if they saw it or not, but I, it just, uh, but so, yeah, day two. Let me get a vape niche, bro. And tonight, tonight's flavor of the day is uh, Gorilla Warfare 556. Highly recommend. It is a cactus sweet a blue sweet agave cactus uh it has a, also a little hint of gummy bears in it and it is wonderful so let me take a very nice fat rip on this i do not condone or let, want younger people under the age of 18 to be smoking but for those who do smoke, I do suggest if you vape. So kids, don't smoke, don't vape. Just saying. Ah, better. So much better. Uh, so let's see who's in chat here. We got Cherry Boomer, my, my sweetheart, Jerry, Cherry Boomer. It's good to see you, hon. And uh, GBO Metric, one of my usuals from in town, Chris himself, and Cherry Boomer's Carmen. Carmen's a good friend of mine. So, hey guys, what's going on? If you haven't seen who's above, my good friends Cody and Riggs are here. It's really awesome. <laughs> so, day two. Day two. So, I wake up an hour later after them. And uh, I go down there to the convention. I've got my backpack ready. Uh, I think it was me and me and Steve. We walked down there and uh, we 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 hit we hit the floor. We catch up with Riggs at his table, and he's like, "Go for it, go crazy." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." So I'm sitting here. It is literally assholes to elbows. It is it is that busy. I, I, Missouri Game Con was almost the same way, but remember this that place was only in a gymnasium. This isn't a convention center. And this place was freaking huge, and I mean freaking huge, and. Uh, so we took, I start walking around. I start hitting some more stuff that I needed because day one, I did get a lot of stuff that I needed. Day two, I was finding the really hard, harder stuff to find. And I did pretty good. Uh, had breakfast with Reggie, X, Steve, and all them upstairs. And uh, that was that was actually really cool. Because uh, I remember he got a, I got a text. And he's like, hey, man, it's from, Re it's from Reggie. He goes, hey, man, we're having breakfast upstairs. And uh, why don't you come join us? And I'm like, we're upstairs. So I had to get shown around where VIP is. And I caught Kinsey up there. And she's like, I need a hug for my Maynard. And uh, so I gave her a big hug. I remember seeing her. She she did a ton of panels, which was crazy. Uh, but I got to have breakfast with the guys. And uh, we went all over the place afterwards. Uh, Saturday Saturday evening when, when everything uh, dined down. Uh, they have the auction. All right, so this is where I'm going to go into Cody's story. This is, this is, oh, seriously, dude. I am so happy for you both. So we got to go to the dinner, but I didn't get to have dinner. 
because they only allowed a VIP with one person. Or if you have it, if you were like, uh, it was a VIP or, or something. But either way, wasn't able to have dinner. So I went and chilled with, with Reggie and all of them. I didn't get any of the news until I got back to the hotel. But but let me tell you, Cody, let me let me tell you, buddy. When I heard the news, I squeed like a little girl. Like, oh my God, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what I did. So, uh, if you guys don't know, and most of you probably do in here, but I know there's a few who don't. Uh, Cody and Kelsey are owners of uh, are owners of uh, Pink Gorilla Studios, which I do have one of your shirts, but it's in the laundry. I wore it last night to my concert, which I was very complimented with it. A lot of people are like, "Oh, do you, you've gone there," but we'll come back to that later. So. They're the owners of Pink Gorilla Games, and uh, they bought it off the previous owner, and they've taken care of that place. They've second opened up a second location, and I know you guys are looking at a third, which is great to hear. And one of these days, I'm going to have to come up there and check out the stores. Definitely have to check out Seattle. Seriously, I'd love to do that. And uh, sure enough, um, here's what happened. So Cody... Cody did something very unique. He hid something in a mystery box. So at the auction, they had certain items for sale. And especially there were some that were in hidden boxes. And you didn't know what was in the hidden boxes. So there were really unique items like 6,000 shares of Atari. Uh, there was one of those uh, Nintendo Sharp TVs, which I know GBO Metric was drooling over the pictures of that. Especially it was almost, it was complete. Even though one of the legs was broken, it could be fixed easily. Uh, and then, uh, sure enough, uh, what else? Uh, there was, there was a very famous computer that, uh, who was it? It was Steve Jobs made and supposedly in the 1980s, it was worth like $10,000 in the 1980s, which is expensive. I don't know how much the inflation on that is now. That's probably like, what, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. I don't know, but somebody bought it for like really cheap. <laughs> So here's what I was told the story. It was really good. So yeah, the, uh, it was Apple One or something. I, I yeah, uh, con uh, control uh, controlly issues. I it's probably I don't know. I don't know what the name was. So they hid. He hid the item in the last box, and people were starting to leave. And from what I was told, uh, Jason Metal Jesus ran up there because people were starting to leave. Because they agreed to this. He was really nervous about asking them, and they were cool with it. So Jason ran up there, and he lets them know that, hey, you know what? Let's bump this up. This is a big event. So sure enough, they bump his item up next. So once he got the word of that, Cody's like, all right, let's go. I got this. So right when the thing starts, he's like, first bid, 500 bucks. He's like, yeah, and he's going at it. it, it supposedly, I was told that Kelsey's like, what the hell? And he's he's bidding against all the all these other people, and I was also told that some of these bids, like the winning bids, are not usually over a thousand dollars, but it went over that, and it went over two thousand, and then it went over twenty five hundred, three thousand, thirty two hundred. There was another gentleman who was actually bidding on it and was jacking the price up so bad that. Drunken Master Paul had to get up and tell this guy quietly, hey, we need you to back down. There's something special going on with this. Which the guy's like, oh, okay, cool. No problem. He got him all the way up to $4,200. <clears throat> Sorry, buddy. Hey, but you know what? It was all for a good cause. It was for a great cause. So nothing wrong with that. So he opens the box. Cody gets the box and all that. And, and Kelsey's like, what is going on here? And sure enough, the ring's inside. And he proposes to her right there. So yeah, Cody could propose to Kelsey. And they're getting married. I, yes! I, I am so happy for you two. And it, 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 from on top of that, uh, watching your guys' stream and hearing that there wasn't a... He, you didn't get... Cody didn't get out saying, will you marry me? He's like just sitting there. I know he had to be nervous as hell to do this. And, and, and even Kelsey just only acknowledged, acknowledged with a nod and all oh, just seeing the photos and oh my god it just it just melts my heart it's so it's such a happy moment it is such a happy moment but I will tell you this I forgot to tell you too so 
Cody, if you're listening, let me grab something real quick. Hang on here for a second. So, uh, if you guys need some help on something, hang on here. Digging, digging the track right now. It's really good. Good music. Good music. Uh, Cody, and if Kelsey's watching, uh, hopefully she's watching. If not, Cody, if you're watching, just to give you a heads up, and Riggs, you're going to love this too, buddy. If uh, you guys need a priest, I am ordained. I am an officially ordained minister. So if you need a minister to marry you two together, I could do that for you. And even better, this is for the Church of the Latter-day Dude through the Big Lebowski. So the dude would abide this wedding. And he would abide this marriage. So just just letting you guys know that, you know, if you, if you do need a minister, I would fly out for you guys. No problem. Not a problem at all. I would do this for you. And I wouldn't even charge you. So yeah, there you go. Just, just in case, I have my certificate here, and I have my letter of good standing up there too. If it gets questioned, so yeah, I can, I can marry you guys if you'd like. So let me go hang that back up. I figured that'd be a funny little thing to add in there, real quick. So, uh, yeah, so second, the end of second night, uh, I was in Riggs's second, not Riggs's, Reggie's uh, second stream too, which we were laughing our asses off at a whole bunch of stuff. Seeing what Steve bought, like he bought a lot of American Saturn games because he's going for a 100% Saturn collection. He's down to 20. That's all he needs is 20 games. And he got some heavy hitters at this convention, too. Especially getting, like, Saturn Bomberman, which is, like, complete inbox for 400 bucks. <gasps> that's that's a little too rich in my blood. There's no way I would spend that much money. But you know what? To each your own, I'm happy for him, for him to get it. So, day three was pretty much the finale. Uh, kind of nice. The hotel kind of gave us a uh, an extra bed so I could sleep in a bed instead of sleeping on the floor. Thank, thank you, Crown Plaza. Thank you so much. But I am a little disappointed that, that day two, the bar was closed early. It's like, what? I need a beer. I need something to drink. But, you know what? Let's rewind to that because that night was actually helped out. I remember getting a text from Riggs. He says, hey, we're downstairs. We're back from Quarter World. Uh... Well, uh, if you want to join us, we're downstairs. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go join them downstairs. Why not? So I remember going downstairs in the elevator. I didn't even put my shoes on because I was going downstairs in the lobby. Why not? So I walked around for a minute and I found them. I found him hanging with Jason and with Drunken Master Paul and Kinsey. And they just got back from Quarter World. And I know I know you guys have been drinking a little bit. And you had your, your, had your little fun moment. You had to go get your, your munchies. Your drunken munchies. We all do that. And my, my go to for drunken munchies is is Jack of the Box, even though Paul was talking about Taco Bell. There's nothing wrong with that. We can both agree on everything, right? Right? So I remember sitting there and we're all we're all talking about uh is it, that's Steve. Yeah, that's 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 Steve Wright. With all the Saturn games, yeah, he's been memed on on Twitter now, thanks to all of his purchases. So if you have not caught Steve on on Twitter, He's, he's getting posted everywhere with his post of why uh, I put a new one up and saying, why can't I hold all these Saturn games? Yeah, that's Steve. So I sat down with with the group and uh, we were we were just sitting there just talking about stuff. And Paul wanted a little know, know a little bit more about me. And uh, sure enough, he he uh, he pull, he goes, I got something for you, Zach. And I go, what's up? And he goes, I got you here. Check this out. And he goes, pulls out a shot glass. And it's actually a shot glass with his logo on it. I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. That looks great. And he goes, well, that's for you. I was like, well, that's cool. Thank you, man. And he goes, oh, well, well, I, got, I got a cooler trick. Check this out. Pulls out three more. So now everybody has shot glasses. And then he goes like this. He goes, 
pulls out two flasks and he's like, do you want rose vodka or do you want bourbon? I'm a bourbon guy. I'll drink both, but I prefer bourbon. Give me my whiskey. And he's like, I like that. So he's pouring shots out for everybody. And I still remember after that, he goes, uh, Jason says, does anybody have a toast? And I did, actually did the toast, and I still remember it. And it's it was pretty easy. So I go like this. I go, Jason, if it wasn't for you and watching your channel, I would have known none of you guys. And sure enough, Kinsey's like, well, the, 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 that, that's like that's like that's like the worst thing ever because it's like it uh, just got so funny right there. But Riggs, I told him, say, hey, Riggs, and you are, man, you are family to me for sending this invite out. And so I thanked him. I told Kelsey she she does a great job and she's adorable and I liked Drunken Master Paul because because of what we were talking about. So, other than that, it, we all took our shots and we we were sitting there having a good time. And sure enough, Paul goes like this. He's he's got his leg up like this and he's he's like, I got a question for you, Maynard. Do you have one of these? I'm like. I've always wanted one of those. And sure enough, he goes, welcome to the family. This is now my challenge going. I am now officially part of the Metal Militia. And let me tell you, I am so happy to have this. Sure enough, uh, Bob Friedel here in St. Louis is like, I'm getting a little worried with that coin. And it shows, it shows uh, from The Hobbit or from Lord of the Rings. My precious. I did order a case for this, so I have a pouch coming. I'm going to wear it as a necklace if I go to conventions and stuff. So I, I am one of you, and I still remember, one of us, one of us. And uh, I, I, this is a treasure to me. This, is, this will be for not only being able to hang with you guys, but uh, this will be it. This, this, this makes my day. If I do ever get big, I, I would like to take an idea like this. And have a man. And since uh, seventy nine TAK brought it up, I would like to make coins for like my closest friends. And uh, I'll have to, I'll have to wait. I know, so, I know. There's at least one or two people here in St. Louis who have these coins, who are in my group that I hang with. But if I go back to the next convention, you know damn well I'm gonna try. So there's your warning. I'm gonna try to do a challenge, even if I have to buy a round. At least I tried. But uh, melt down your Ford and make some. Hey, screw you, 79TA kid. I, lo I love my little ranger. So day three. Unless, eh. Do I really want to tell the story? Do I really want to tell that story? That is that is a crazy story. Nah, we'll, we'll hold off on it. We'll hold off on it. it, it, it a really funny thing happened, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep that in the group. That was a really funny thing that happened. You will steal all my mystic coins and open a portal. Come on. So day three was really quick, unfortunately. I did I, on second and third day. I started to get all my rounds of all my photos with people, and sure enough, on second day I was really excited because the museum opened. There was a museum for uh, Nintendo history, which I loved so much. It was so great, and it showed the history of Nintendo from when they started to where we are now. And they had everything you can think of from, like, the original toys, like the Ultra Hand. What was it? The Ultra Hand? And, uh, oh, the Ultra Arm. That's what it was. Uh, the Duck Hunt light gun game back when they didn't even make consoles or anything. Uh, all the way to, they showed Famicom collection. They had the whole complete black box art collection. Uh, an original kiosk display of the original uh, Nintendo console with Rob, like it was being shown as a toy. I mean, everything you could think of was in this, even including like the first like bootlegs and stuff that were coming out. But it was really cool to see that. And then with that, there were two other little exhibits around the area in that museum. They showed they showed some more like. I have gotten a hold. I'm going to need to get a hold of one of the guys who are in charge of it or probably somebody at the National Video Game Museum. I don't know if they have a PowerFest 94 hat, and I would love to donate it. I've got a unused, never-worn PowerFest 94 hat uh, that I got through Savers for like three bucks. So it was lucky me. But it's an official hat, and I would like to donate it to them to 
and to continue the history of Nintendo. So I would love to do that. If anybody knows them, you know, I've got a card. I'll have to start connecting. But if you have a direct connection to them, let them know and let me know. I would love that. But uh, the other part was John Hancock brought his whole Nintendo collection with him, which is a complete collection, if I remember correctly. Which every game you can think of in the Nintendo, he had complete in box. Or at least some of them were sealed, if I remember correctly. But still, it's, it, it was balls to the walls crazy. Everything you can think of. All the Mega Mans, all the Ninja Gaidens, all the Turtles, all the Mario Brothers. Every hard-to-find game, including some, like, he has, like, a stadium events, but I think he was borrowing the box from somebody to at least show at the, at the show here. But he had a stadium events, and it's just wow. And then the other thing from day two that I laugh about is I remember walking the floor, and here comes Terry Diebold. And I go, hey, Terry. And he's like, Maynard, what are you doing here? And he gave me a big hug. And, and I said, hey, Riggs got me out here. And, and so here I am. And, and I'm, I heard that you brought the Super Nintendo PlayStation again. And he goes, yes, I did. I said, well, I'll come by later and check on you. So after I checked all the Nintendo games and I was doing a recording of everything, I sat down with him. And I, I can't remember her name, but oh, she was there, too, that had the virtual girl, which is a really cool little gag thing that she did. And it looked really done, well done. It was professionally done. So instead of having the virtual boy, it had the virtual girl. And it was in pink, pink and black instead of red and black. It was it was signed as well, which is great. But uh, Terry was there, and I sat down with him and gave him a high five. And it's like, you know, how have you been? I haven't seen you since Mo Game Con 2. Uh, your collection's gotten bigger, which is great. And he, go, he was telling me that he was just, just went to Switzerland. He's been to Monte Carlo recently. Uh, went to Canada again. But he's been, he's been adventuring with it. And I got to ask him, I said, if the day ever comes, what's it going to take for you to let that thing go? And he, that's what he let me know. And I have it on video. He actually had a $1 million offer for it. Which then, he wasn't really satisfied with it. So he countered. And he countered it with three. Which... <laughs> Oh, my God. But he says, yeah, if that ever happens, I'm retiring. I'm done. And let me tell you, for as much trouble he's gone through with this. Now, mind you, he's had an adventure with it. And he's gone around the world with it. He's got a piece of history in his hands. It's amazing what he's been able to do with this, which is a simple $75 bid on an office that he didn't know what was inside has changed his life. And I know for sure he said he's going to retire. And I would say, I totally agree with you on that. You're up there in age. You need to relax. And I know that piece of equipment gives him so much stress to keep because it is priceless. And sure enough, uh, it, it was it was really good to see him. But I did tell him, I said, you know, it would be great if somebody were to purchase it and donate it to the Video Game History Museum. That's where it, that's where it belongs. In my famous words, with my leather hat and my leather pouch and, and leather, leather leather jacket like Indiana Jones, it belongs in a museum. And uh, hopefully, hopefully that happens with it with that piece of equipment because we don't know if there's any others. We really don't know. That could be the only one that's there. And uh, so back to day three caught up with everyone that I could the only pictures I didn't get with was Jason Kinsey uh, I was so hoping to meet Tommy Tallarico I'll be honest but I, since I had to leave early so I could catch my flight I was real bummed about it so hopefully I'll catch him another day I want him to sign my earthworm gym so mission failed we'll get him next time so but uh it was really good. It was, it was kind of like the sad day. It's like, well, I got everything I needed, but I don't want to leave. It's so cool here. But I had to. So I hopped on my flight after about 11 o'clock or so and uh, flew out, came home. I left at 11 o'clock their time, so it was 1 o'clock here, and I didn't get home until 1230 here. I didn't leave the airport af until after 12.30, especially when I got to the airport. I'll let you guys know something that I didn't put up. I get to my lot. I was at Lot D at Lambert Airport, which is way out, but it's the cheapest lot you can park at. It's seven bucks a day. So there's there's a little advice. If you're in St. Louis, you need a, you need a cheap place to park. Just go to Lot D. You might as well. 
I get out there, I get dropped off, and I'm getting up to my truck, and a guy comes walking up to me, and I'm like, you know, I have that instinct. I, I have concealed carry, like, skills I've been taught, and I've been training. And it's like the first reaction is, you know, try to show that you have something. And it's like I'm pretending that I actually have like a handgun on me. I'm like, what's going on here? Don't you come and don't you come at me. If you do, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something and you don't want you're gonna regret it. I have to show him a trump card. But the guy was nice. He goes, Oh, whoa, whoa, I'm not here for any trouble or anything. I need help. Uh, I just got back from a three week trip. I got out here and uh, just found out that my car is dead. I need to jump. Can, I've got power cables. Can you help me jump the car? I'm like, oh, yeah, hell yeah. No problem, man. So I got to my truck. I went like four rows over, and he's sitting there, and he's got the door open, and he pops the hood. I'm like, is there even any power on it? And he's like, nothing. So he's turning the key. There's nothing. So we jump his car, and it took about five minutes. That's how dead his battery was. Like, it took five minutes for that battery to at least get something to jump. And sure enough, the car just started. It was great. And it, it, it got really good. And I, I don't like to brag or anything. But the guy's like, here's 50. Like, he was literally handing me a $50 bill. He goes, here's 50 bucks. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't need that. I don't. As tempting as it was, no, I don't need that. He goes, well, hand me your ticket. Let me at least pay for your parking. I'm like, no, no, you were gone for three weeks. You've already got a nice bill. Don't worry about it. And that's when I said, just pay it forward. Just pay it forward, man. That's all you got to do. Don't worry about don't worry about giving it out. Just pay it forward when somebody needs help. And I I live by that rule. And that's basically, you know, just pay it forward. If if you see somebody in trouble, be nice in this world. Help them. That's all we have to do. We have to help one another. So I just told him don't worry about it. Just pay it forward. So hopefully one day he'll do that to somebody that needs help. So I got home about 12 thir- uh, about 1 one thirty, and I was so tired oh my god so so let's uh let's recap so all three days were fantastic uh had so much fun I am in debt to John Riggs and and not only John Riggs but Reggie uh let's go down the list of everybody I know Jason Kinsey Kelsey Cody Riggs Reggie uh, John Hancock, uh, K over at Murder of Crows, uh, goodness, there's so much more, Pat, Rue, Gerard, oh yeah, yeah, day three, I walked down in the hotel room, and there's Gerard, the completionist, got to talk to him for a little bit, and it was amazing how, how much, how much work it takes to actually do a YouTube channel nowadays, he only gave us a brief little quick summary about it, but from his perspective, how big he's gotten, he's got an office of 15 people, so it's not like... You know, I make videos and that's it. No, he has to maintain a company now. He has to maintain their payroll. He has to maintain their health care. He has to maintain the office. He has to maintain tax property and all that. It's just incredible what he does. And you can tell he's got a lot of work into him. But you know what? A lot of work pays off. And let me tell you, he, has, he was super nice. Super, super nice. And when I got to also meet Austin, Peanut, Bumber, Peanut Butter Gamer, uh, Space Hamster, and Gerard, not Gerard, Jared, like Pro Jared, Space Hamster, Peanut Butter Gamer, they were super nice. I met them on day one, and only got to talk to them for a little bit, but you could tell that everybody was tired after day one, so, yeah, but got to meet all of them, and then also uh, John Lister, oh god, I feel bad for forgetting him. I did buy a copy of something off him, which is really cool to have, but John Lister, Gamester81, really down to earth. That is a chill dude. Oh my god. And, and I'm glad for, uh, for his convention down in, in Phoenix that he does because that's been blowing up. He's on, he's going, he just had his fourth year as well. And I told him about how Missouri Game Con's had their third, and he even heard about it. So he, he congratulated me, so I have to let the crew know. You know we, got, we got a blessing from, from John Lester, uh, Gamester81, about that. Uh, but uh, who else did, did I forget? I'm trying to think. Uh, Leslie as well, the coordinator for one of the main coordinators for uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo. She gave me a little bit of some insight and some information to pass to my crew for Missouri Game Con. And uh, God, uh, 8-Bit Guy, he was really cool. I got to meet him. Uh, David Murray. Um, 
Ian Ferguson, Pat Contrary, all, all you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, to, even if I got to only meet you for a minute, you know, taking the minute and saying hi, they were so nice. Griffin Aaron was everywhere on the floor. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, the Tetris Club Championship was there. I did catch the end of it when the when the uh, the 16 year old won against the seven year time champion. That was amazing. Oh my god, it was it was such a good time, and I, I am forever indebted. But on top of that, it's a it's a weekend that I will always treasure. And here's the thing about this convention that I love. It's it's not about only the games. It's not about only retro games, but it's about a community. About how all of us get together from all over the country and even some people around the world. There were some people from different countries that were here. Um, how we all got together to enjoy this convention, to share our passion and and have a wonderful time for one weekend where we get to hang with all of our friends and and have a good time yeah adam korlick was there too adam's a good friend of mine as well from uh the first game con the first mo game con we had he was our first celebrity our celebrity he he's like i'm not a youtube celebrity it's like i, 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 I kind of are but uh sega bay if you haven't heard the story he's sega bay and i have to thank him for something too because he uh he helped me out on finding something i really needed and uh I'm trying to think of anyone else just making sure I don't forget anyone else. Joe, who was with us in the group, with Riggs and Steve as well. Steve is oh Steve, I gotta thank him. He's such a bro. Joe, Joe is a great guy as well to me. And I've and most of these people that I talk to at this convention, I friended. Uh, X as well, uh, Trevor. Uh, my God, the work he does for his nonprofit organizations. That guy is amazing that might be one of the reasons i might go down to arizona because he helps at their convention at the game on expo that's what it's called he works with lester john lester and uh i would actually probably have to go check out that convention too so there's three conventions i could do i could do missouri game con portland retro gaming expo and the game on expo that would be great to do and hopefully when i get more time off i'll start checking retropalooza and too many games so but uh, slowly but surely, we're getting there. But uh, this this whole weekend has been fantastic. So there's the bonus. Let me tell you guys the bonus from last night. I mean, after I take another fat rip off my uh, my vape machine, vape nation. Well, here you go, vape nation. Oh, so much better. So, so either way, I got to start sending some ski to John Riggs. I owe him so much for this. Retropalooza isn't far from me. Where is Retropalooza, by the way? Is it in, like, is it north of here? Or is it east of here? I can't remember. Stink bug. I hate stink bugs. Oh, it's in Arlington. Okay. Well, that means I can call some friends that I just met here and maybe get get a hookup down there. So, might have to uh, might have to uh, give my might give my buddy Steve a call. So, uh, also one in Houston now, but that's further away. Oh, that's actually where Steve is. He's in Houston, but I have a good friend in Dallas and I have a good friend in Houston. Arlen, Texas? What is this? Is this, uh, King of the Hill? God dang it, Bob. Oh! My dad! <laughs> oh, man. So, my bonus. Here's my bonus. So, last night, I went to a concert venue, and, uh, Mega Ran was in town. I sell propane and propane accessories. But, dad... What if somebody wanted their steak well done? We just tell them to politely leave. <laughs> I love King of the Hill. I wish that series would continue. But um, 
Yeah, Mega Ran was in town. He was on his tour with MC Lars. He was with MC Frontalot and Shape of the Darkness. Got to see their show, uh, which was awesome as hell. But uh, it was really cool. I got there and I talked to I talked to Random for a little bit, and uh, you know we caught up since I saw him like three years ago. But I keep in touch with him on Twitter, and uh, it, we start talking. He goes, "So how was the convention?" He's like, I've been to Portland before. I went there three years ago. I'd love to go back, but they just don't invite me. I was like, dude, if they don't invite you, who cares? You could still go up there. You know, hell, Steve just went for the first time. I bet you we can get you up there and get you a goddamn VIP pass pretty easy. So uh, I've convinced him. I said, hey, you need to go for sure. So uh, he was excited to hear that I went. I showed him my, I had my coin on me. He was amazed. He did his freestyle, which I put it up on the on the Metal Jesus Rocks group, and it's on my Facebook page. I'll have to put it up on Twitter or something as well. But he was doing his freestyle run, which is really cool. If you ever seen his show live, he takes a freestyle rap and he asks for people to take something out of their pocket, and he freestyles with it. Meaning he's got nothing in his mind or anything, but he flows with whatever the music is. That he does a damn good job. He can do it. And so I had my coin, and he gave... He's like, Metal Jesus Rocks, that's a cool channel. And so he gave them a shout-out, and he gave out Portland Retro Gaming Expo a shout-out that he says he's going to go back to. Uh, we also did a video for Steve, because he knows Steve right. Because uh, Steve, Steve... He's been to Steve's place, and he goes, Steve's got a massive collection of games. And uh, hearing what he got, and I showed him, he's like, he's going for a full Saturn set. He's like, oh my god, he's he's spending a lot, but he's doing it. And uh, so we sent we we sent Steve a video, and I've I've convinced him to to go to Portland, and I also also have him interested for Mo Game Con. So there's a little surprise for you for the guys here in St. Louis. I'll have to talk with the crew because when I told them that we can condu we conduct our own here and I'm an advisor for the committee and uh, they said he said uh, yeah I'll get in touch with them I'd be very interested to come to St. Louis I'd like to check it out I said hey if you if you want to know how it is talk to Reggie Riggs and all them they've been here twice and they like it and he goes honestly st louis is one of my favorite stops and i'm not just saying that because you're here but he goes i like st louis st louis is a really good town to come to so hopefully we can get him here at mo game con as well and uh just to show you something real quick guys i do have his mega mega ran 9 cd which has my favorite track that he does called splash woman uh it's track three on here and uh, he also signed it so it is signed by him and i was also able to pick up not one, but two of the 30th anniversary pins that he was selling for Mega Man. So I have those. So these are these are getting hard to find. You can only get these through, I think, Capcom and a couple of other people. But I also had... He's also sold them. He got a whole bunch so he can sell. They gave him a whole bunch of these to sell on the road. And uh, so I've got two of them. He was selling two of them for 20 bucks. I'm like, why not? <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, overall the convention, I will treasure. It was an amazing moment, especially going to a city I've never known, and I actually fell in love with it. I actually like Portland. Now, Portland has its positives and negatives, just like any other city. Hell, even like St. Louis. But it wasn't bad. I liked it. Everything was in walking distance that we needed, and everybody was chill and cool you might have ran into a crazy bum or two but they weren't like gonna attack you and if they did i don't know does the city of portland allow concealed carry like constitutionally because if they did i'd be okay with it if i could carry constitutionally in in portland oregon i wouldn't have a problem living in portland because i'd be carrying a handgun everywhere <laughs> i'd have to check out gun laws hmm. so um now, here comes the part here where I'd like to show you all what I got at Portland. After another fat rip there. God, I'm going to have to start ordering. Like, I, I, think, I think I just need to get a hold of Excel Brewery and be like, Excel Bottling Company and be like, hey, I need to 
work out some contract if we could start sending Ski up to Washington to Riggs and Reggie and all of them in the crew and, and, and for Metal Jesus Rocks because, pff, boy, it's not cheap buying Ski on Amazon for 16 bucks a case. Sure, it's two-day prime. It's nice, but... 16 bucks a case is a little little up there, so I may have to get in contact with them and see if there's any way we can do that. But all right, let me let me grab I have not unpacked my suitcase, so this is this is quite a bit. Let me grab my suitcase here. Oh, if you guys haven't noticed too, I actually have my new chair here. I've got a Killaby gaming chair, which is super nice. I can I can lean back. I can also come here. I can I can sit normally. Uh, right there. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, no, a little too far. Nah, I'm, I'm just having fun with my chair. Sorry. I didn't make the bed? No, because I've been lazy as fuck. So, I left with a suitcase full of just three days worth of clothes and my necessities and an extra backpack. And I came back, I came back with a backpack full of clothes... A couple snacks, a couple trinkets, and a whole fuckload of a suitcase that's full of games. That's that's what I did. So here we go. And I mean a ton of stuff to go through. So here we go. So first things first. Oh, Steve Steve carried an extra an extra carry on for his Saturn games. I figured he would. I was really surprised what he did too, because most of those games were super expensive. He got that he had. If you didn't see, he had a PSX, the Japanese PSX. And he said within 15 minutes of being on the floor, he offered it to somebody who had high price Saturn games, and boom, he had like he had like t so many games already for a trade, which was really good on him. There was another gentleman I should have I should have uh, explained, but there was a really cool here. There's uh, there was one of the tournaments here was a 16 player Grand Prix of Mario Kart Double Dash, which it was in HD. They were using the uh, they were using the G GCHDs on them, and uh, they had a little scavenger hunt. But meh, I, I really don't need a G G H uh, GCHD because I already have uh, I have uh, an OCC with an o OSCC. OSCC open source scan converter oh my god I can't even think with a uh, uh, also a uh, I've got the component cables so I really don't need to get one there was another gentleman I need to sh I need to let you guys know uh, uh, who was it uh, Mark Erickson uh, artist Mark Erickson was there too, which is really great because he did the artwork for the badges for the convention, which I actually have their uh, little pamphlet here, which if you realize it's Mega Man 2, he's the artist who did Mega Man 2's cover artwork. And if you don't notice, if you look at an original Mega Man 2, the background has been changed on this because it's the convention center in Portland. And meeting him was really cool. Sadly, he does not have the original of this artwork, but I do have pictures up on Facebook of he had two of his original arts with him. Uh, the Tengen version of Afterburner on the Nintendo, which was beautiful to look at. I think I've got the picture here. Uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can find it. It's in my photos. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Hang on here. Where is my albums? Hang on, buddy. All right, hang on here. I'm going to try to find the photo here. All right, here it is. Let me copy the image address. check to see if that's going to come up. Yep, that's going to come up. Cool. So, it's going to pop up here in a second. Hang on here. There it is. So, let me disable the lock and I'll blow the picture up. So, this is Mark Erickson. And you see there, that is his original artwork of Afterburner. 
which is incredible. Let me. So he's a very nice gentleman. Uh, let me blow this up even more. I'm gonna take over the whole screen. Screw it. So this guy is freaking nice. And uh, this is the original piece right here of the Tengen version of Afterburner. And he was explaining, you know, he did this first where he showed the just the plane and all that and the plane going down in the background and one exploding. And uh, they wanted tracers and all that, but he, it's amazing that he has this. And it was beautiful. And I just loved it. I was like, I was like, Afterburner is one of my favorite games, even though it was the Nintendo version. But the artwork of this, I said, the artwork of this is beautiful. I loved it. And he had another piece, if you see behind him, which I have another photo of that. Uh, he had another original photo with him. Uh, let me pull that one up. This is his original piece for... Hang on here. Delete. Copy image address. Pop that over. Okay. This is, origi is his original art piece of G-Lock on the Genesis. And even that is, wow, that is amazing. That actually looks really good. And uh, man, just, just hearing how, how, the, how it works for him is basically he would present these to the companies after he makes the example of like, they would explain to him what type of photo they would need or the idea of what he needs. And he would start drawing it. It'd take him at least, he says these would take about a week to do. Now mind you, he's doing like three or four pieces a week. And once he was completed, he would present it to them. And he says most of the time they would return the photo after they were done with it. So he has most of his originals, but the one original he does not have, it's lost. We don't know where it is, is the Mega Man 2, which is unfortunate. But seeing that it is, is amazing. They're well done. Oh, Steve says I'm an amazing and awesome dude. Oh, that makes me feel so good. I've told my, you know what, I, I live with my folks here. I actually told my folks they would love him. So I'm hoping he comes to Mo Game Con. I'm, I want to see if I could get him up here for Mo Game Con. I want, I want everybody to meet Steve. That's how cool he is. And so it, it, it's a friendship I will treasure now to know Steve. And, and not only Steve, but I've already said it a million times, Riggs, buddy. Riggs buddy and Reggie and Paul and Kinsey and Kelsey and Cody and Jason and oh my goodness this is good times oh this is so good times hey Krillin what's going on man you know, hopefully you didn't you didn't throw a Zenzu bean at me buddy but uh, I see yeah I see the code uh, HDMI adapters for 100 bucks yeah you know, like I said, I already have an OSSC and uh, the component cables for the uh, for the GameCube, so I really don't need it. But uh, man, Mark Erickson's artwork, I love it. I, I will have to get a hold of him and see if I can order some of his pieces. I'd like to when I get my own place. It's kind of his artwork I would like to have around. Like I have one of the I have a one of the paintings for uh, Metroid Zero Mission here that was sold through. Uh, uh, what's the place called? They're with GameStop, which is really cool. I have that, but I also have like another piece here that's actually an original print. It's a very limited print of like only 80 copies of Samus's helmet, which is really cool. Let me see if I can actually point the camera to it. Like it's up there. It's a really cool little piece that I have that's done by one of my favorite artists that he only made 80, 80 prints of. So, uh oh, I lost my centering of my camera. Let me see if I can fix this right here. Over here, over here. Oh, you see my hand. Oh, too low, too low, too low. Come on, camera, cooperate with me. No, don't, don't, no, don't you do that. Okay, I think that might be my best here. So, just have to. Hey guys, turtle, turtle. I think I just, this is gonna annoy me. This is where OCD kicks in. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Okay, we're just going to have to work with that. Oh, well, that's good. So, all right, let's start showing what I've got here. This is this is where it's going to get crazy. So, uh, part of Old School Gamer Magazine now, which is really cool. This is one of their first prints that they have. They have 
interviews of other people and have, oh wow there's actually an interview with Brian Collin who actually visit us at Bo Game Con which is really cool but, uh, let's see here. I got these at Pink Gorilla at their stand I have Japanese copies of one of my favorite little racers MRC for the N64 and also Turok the dinosaur hunter in Japanese which is actually really cool so I've got those need to have the expert guide of Kelsey to do this for me. And I'm really annoyed with this stupid camera. Okay, that'll have to work. I now have officially a Wonder Swan. I'm super happy to have one of these. Uh, this is uh, Gunpei Yokoi's last creation before he passed away when he was working with Bandai when he unfortunately resigned over at Nintendo, which I don't think he officially resigned. I think they were like, either you quit or you resign because he failed on the Virtual Boy. And I do have two games for it. I've got Final Fantasy and I have Star Hearts. So these are pretty cool. These are cool for the collection, so it's no problem. These were super cheap. It's unfortunate that these are in Japanese. There's no translation. Heck, I don't even think there's a flash cartridge for this game console. But having one of these, I kind of always wanted one. So now I do. It's really neat. Um, it only runs on one AA battery. And the battery is in its own little case. So, it's really cool to have this. So, it's really neat. You can, you can do it both ways. You can play like this, or you can play like this. Let's see here. Uh, I do now have the Quattro 4 Adventure, if you're very familiar, mil, la, la, familiar with Codemasters. One of my favorite little collections. It's one of the gold cartridges that they released for unofficial games, but it was actually a really good collection. I'd say the best one out of all this is Super Robin Hood, which is really good. And uh, for I got it for a decent price. Let's see, what else here? Picked up. Top Gear Pocket 2, because I'm a big fan of Top Gear for from Kimco. And uh, I've never had Top Gear Pocket 2, but I, I need to find an, a, an original Top Gear Pocket, which is really fun. Guys are throwing Destructo Discs over there. Come on, man. Come on. Let's see here. What else? Uh, I've got some TurboGrafx-16 games, which I'm actually excited because you guys know I do have a TG-16 now. And I have it RGB modded, which is really cool through the special board that I ordered. So now I have Ninja Scroll. So there's Ninja, uh, I'm sorry, Ninja Spirit. Why did I say Ninja, Ninja Scroll? Ninja Spirit, uh, really good game done by Irem that they released on the tur uh, the Turbo Graphics here. Uh, that is also complete in box. I also have not only Alien Crush, but I also have Devil's Crush. So I have both of the really cool uh, pinball games that are for this console. And these two are both complete in box. So there's 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 Alien Crush, and here's Devil's Crush. So I've got them complete in box as well. And I just hit the microphone. Sorry, y'all. Uh, surprisingly, uh, man, Devil's Crush for seventies bucks. That was a pricey game. These are some of the, some some of the hard hitters. Even Ninja Spirit is actually was forty five, but it's complete inbox. Oh, you have those games, but not complete inbox. And I see uh, control issues. That is the same the same thing, man. That's kind of a nitpick thing. That's kind of a nitpick thing for about me is getting these Turbo Graphics sixteen games. I've only won a select few games. Uh, but they have to be complete in box. It's it's been a pain in the ass, but I'm willing to pay for it because there's only a few games that I want. I've already got uh, R-Type, uh, Legendary Axe, uh, Final Lap Twin, Victory Run, and the really horrible wrestling game. I don't know why we got that wrestling game. It's really bad. I, we should have gotten like Fire Pro Wrestling, which is way better.
Control, that's the way I used to get some of my games back in the day. I've got some GameCube games when one of my rental stores close to. I've got some really hard hitters in that, like Gauntlet, Dark Legacy, uh, Killer7, and uh, what else? Uh, F-Zero GX, and not one, but two copies of Super Smash Bros. Melee for like five bucks. Complete in box. So... Let's talk about Sega Saturn, because yes, I even enjoy Sega Saturn as well. I, it is a really under underappreciated console that needs more love, and I've got some imports here. I have the Daytona USA Circuit Edition in uh, complete inbox, and when I mean complete inbox, it's got everything, including the spine. Like, the spine's in there too, the spine card, so it's cool to have that. I'm a huge fighting fan. And uh, I did get Fighting Vipers, which I'm super happy to have this, the import of Fighting Vipers. And that too is complete in box. Super happy with this. And I also have, which is really cool, a really under underrated fighting game that Sega made. I actually have Last Bronx now, the import of it. And what's really cool about this, it has its spine card and everything, but it also has the posters and the stickers with it. So this is complete. So it's got, it's a, surprisingly, it's a two disc. There's the arcade game and a special disc with it too that I did not know about. I'll have to do some research on this. So there's those. Uh, what else? Uh, picked up Shadow of the Beast for the Atari Lynx for my Model 2. Blazing Lasers is a wonderful game. You never knew what Saturn import games to pull the trigger on? Let me give you let me give you a little rundown of games that you should pick up. Uh, Fighters Mega Mix. Any of the American games that we have that you don't need to know English about, you can get for a lot cheaper doing Sega Saturn games that are imports but some of the harder games like uh, let's see uh, Henry Explorers is one of them that I would recommend uh, Layer Section um, Assault Suit Lionos 2 which never released here in America which is unfortunate uh, some of the Sega classics like the Outrun port the, the uh, Space Harrier port the Afterburner 2 port those are great to pick up uh, one that I would always, always highly recommend, Thunder Force 5. Mm, I love my shoot 'em ups I love my shmups. They're so good. If you're going to get Sega Rally, you can get the American version, but I actually recommend the Netlink uh, Sega Rally Plus. Uh, because it ha it's just like the arcade. It actually has the third car in it, which is the Lotus Stratus. So if you, if you do get that, I would highly recommend the Japanese Plus version of it. All right, let's see. Try not to, try not to get into my heavy hitters yet. Did anybody who went to the convention go to the uh, tables that had the, uh, what was it? The, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, they had the... Uh, big thing of like junk like you go in there you pay like five bucks and you can just get whatever you want because I got a multi console S video cable these are monster brand actually which is really nice so I'm kind of glad I have these these are monster brand S video cables so these are really nice to pick up real quick these are getting harder to find and Monster itself is actually a really good quality, so I've got no complaints here. Got those as a freebie, thanks to Reggie. I helped him dig through that, that whole thing. Yeah, fill the bag where you're at as much as you can. Yeah, uh, that's where it came from. And I spotted that. I gave him like two multi-taps. Uh, he, I helped him find a GameCube monitor, which he's like, super excited. I told him he needs to get a certain plug, which he already has, so he's going to check to make sure it works. I'll have to buzz him after this, because I actually sent him something as a thank you as well for helping me out. And, uh, let's see here. Second Master System of Time Soldiers for 57 cents. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, 
Um, I've never really got into this, but I think I'm going to start trying it. I'm actually kind of glad to have these both, but I'm going to have to start reading Japanese to uh, understand what's being done. But I did play this on GameCube, and I actually do like it. And now I have the first two games. I have Robo Custom Robo 1 and Custom Robo 2 Complete Inbox for the Nintendo 64. This is really cool to have. And uh, these will be presented nicely on my collection list here. So I'll need to go find Custom Robo for the uh, GameCube now, which is really good. But yeah, having one and version two right here. Found them both. Uh, what else do I have here? So John Lester had his game for sale. So I actually now have a complete copy of Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death for the Super Nintendo. This is, oh, I can't get it in camera. This is really cool to have. This is all complete. Got to play it for a little bit, really liked it. So uh, I was very happy to get this from him. And he's actually getting ports for the PS4, the Switch, the PC going as well. And Xbox, I think Xbox One as well. So actually happy to see that actually uh, working out for him. So uh, having the Super Nintendo version here is going to be kind of cool to play through. I told him, I said, you know what? I might actually have to do a stream of this now. And he goes, oh, really? So I gave him one of my cards. So hopefully whenever I stream it, he'll come by and watch it. So I will be playing this down the road. This might actually be one of my specials I'll do. I might do this on my Thanksgiving special for fun. Uh, oh, another thing from the junk, from the junk bin, which I'm kind of happy to have. Uh, it is the Magic Eye for the PS2, which will work for the PS3. I'm not sure if it works for the PS4, but I needed one. I wanted to get one of these, so if I do get a PS3 and get Move, I actually have the camera ready to go. So this will come in handy. Freebie as well from Reggie. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. And the Pelican Turbo Controller for the Super Nintendo. Another freebie, thanks to him, uh, which has turbo functions it actually feels right the d-pud pad feels a little weird but eh, i can work with it but, uh, uh, here's a really interesting thing john lister actually gave him this and he's like i have no need for this but i'll just give it to you so uh another thing i'll have to do for mr lister uh gamester 81 himself uh thank you reggie for this i actually got for free an Evo Retro wireless switch controller, brand new. So I will have to get this out. And uh, basically, this will come in handy because I've been needing to get a wireless controller for my switch. So I'm going to have to try this out and uh, let you guys know how it is. So I will be doing a review on this down the road uh, for, for free. I can't complain because Lister was given to certain people. And since he Reggie said, you know, I don't need one. I've already got a controller that I like. So he just he's like, here, take it, Maynard. And uh, so if uh, I'll need to let uh, Lester know, I'll be doing a review for you, buddy. So uh, keep an eye out for it, and I'll let you know how it is. I got a good feeling about this. I've been needing a wireless controller for my Switch for certain games, especially. I'll be honest, right now, playing through Mega Man 11 with the with the normal controller like this got a little hard i was like i mean it controls well but but really i need a d-pad and so this has got a d-pad so we'll, we'll be using this kind of interesting because it has like certain different variations of interchangeable d-pads so that's kind of cool it has different variations of d-pads huh hmm let me check that out Hey, hey, control. How about how about por qué no los dos? Why not both? And then you just you get tossed in the air for for having having both a Switch and a Wii U. Sadly, I put my Wii U away. I I boxed it back up. I don't play mine. So, uh, here's Mark Erickson's uh, card. So I will check out his stuff. Really nice dude. And it has a lot of his original artwork in the on there as well. Like uh, I see Strider. Uh, Galaga 88. Uh, oh, uh, he did. Uh, what is it? Parzwai uh, or whatever for the for the Genesis. I didn't know that. I'll be damned. I really didn't know that. Oh, he also did the Tengen Tetris, which uh, 
I'll go ahead and let you guys know right now. We're going into the heavy hitters. So yeah, I have a Tengen Tetris. And surprisingly, 60 bucks. Um, this is a harder game to find because, you know, these were pulled because of this issue. This is the better Tetris for the Nintendo. And actually, that's that's Mark Erickson's artwork on there. I should have had him sign this. Son of a bitch. I didn't think about that. But I do have my badges hanging over on my collection. My badge is signed. I had it signed by him. Yes, are you ready for Tetris, mofo? Cherry, you need to go look up this version. This version is way better. So I'm happy. I've been looking for one of these for the last couple of years. I've always wanted one when I was a kid because I remember it was so much money because they pulled it. And uh, I'm actually glad they have this. Uh, well, I'm actually glad I have this now. But 60 bucks. what's funny is I found it. I was like, if I just find a copy, I'll just pay the money. My, my limit for this sh for this convention was pretty high. So I, I, had, I had plenty of revenue to do this. Uh, but... Uh, when I bought it, there were some guys that were around me, and they they were like, you know what? We've been around the convention. We're not going to lie. You probably got the cheapest copy that, that was there for 60 bucks. So it's cartridge only, but for $60, I'll take it. So I have the Tengen Tetris, which is really cool. Uh, let's see here. All right, now we are going into the heavy hitters. Heavy, heavy hitters. Uh, this is actually done by... Uh, Kay, who's very popular up there at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, he's very well known. He's been there for many, many years, and John Riggs introduced him to me. He's a really good guy. I'm going to have to catch up with him some way. Um, I've got his card, and I've got the podcast he's on, so hopefully I can catch him on those. But uh, he does uh, reproductions of games, and this is one of the reproductions I've always wanted, because there's no way in hell, and I mean no way in fucking hell I'm going to pay that much money to have a copy of this. If you know what I'm talking about, let's, let us let me give you a clue. Sega Saturn. How about that? Okay, there there's your clue. I'm super happy to do this. He had a variation of this, but I asked if he can make an original for me, which he says, since you know Riggs, no problem. I'll be more than welcome to make you one. He, and he, he's gone through a lot lately, especially I didn't get to share. It's actually stated in the, uh, in the pamphlet here for, for, uh, for Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, here it is. Don Russell. What, uh, what I was told. Uh, Don, let me, let me read the article here real quick. Uh, Don Russell recently lost his battle with cancer. Don was a friend to so many game collectors over the years and a regular attendee at PRGE. We had a pleasure of meeting him at the convention when it's when it was just starting, consisting of 200 people in a weekend. In a weekend, a good turnout. Even back then, Don stood out. Uh, what I was told is that uh, Don uh, came down with a condition of cancer and he passed away just about three months ago, which is unfortunate. I don't like to see people, you know, pass too early in their life. And uh, unfortunately, it, it took Don. Uh, the thing is that's good about this whole event, though, with bringing up Don, uh, the auction that I talked about earlier, proceeds of the auction went to the expenses for uh, his funeral arrangement and his medical bills. And it paid off everything, which is great to hear. So hearing that kind of kind of is amazing to hear that the, that the community comes together for one another when something happens. And he must have been, Don must have been a very close friend of Kay because Kay is still hurting about it. And uh, this is Kay's card right here. I'll tell you what, I'll show you who Kay is. Kay is a very nice gentleman. And uh, let me show you who he is real quick. Here we go. This is Kay. Very kind gentleman. Very, very funny, I will say. Very funny, but uh, very kind gentleman. And uh, I know he almost had a breakdown moment when Steve talked to him. And, and Steve's, a, Steve's a very religious person, and I have no problem with him with that. And he was giving him a prayer because of what's been going on lately. And so, Kay, if, if you're hearing or listening in, uh, we're thinking about you, buddy. We're, we're, we hope you're okay. 
and uh, Kay was especially nice enough to do that for, for, for what he did for me. And so, uh, other than that, oh, Krillin, you're taking off, buddy. Go get some sleep, dude. Thanks for coming by. If you haven't, you know, you don't have to hit favorites or anything like that, but we like to see you come back. So please come back anytime you'd like. But uh, get, getting to where I was, uh, Kay did me a favor. And he made a regular version for me because he had a widescreen format hack of this, which is really cool. But I just wanted a regular version because I told him, you know, I have uh, upscale uh, devices. I told him I had an OSSC and all that. He says, oh, cool. No problem. I can do this for you. So I actually finally have completed the Panzer Dragoon series. Even though this is a repro, I'm counting this. Panzer Dragoon Saga. I am happy with this. And let me tell you, the work that he's done, he actually went the extra step and uh, he actually made a custom cover for me as well, what I was told, which is, oh man, thank you so much. But the best part, look at the quality that he put in to these to these discs. I'm happy with this. Now, I, you know, I got into a little discussion with some people and he's got his, he, he's got his uh, little group's insignia in here, which is fine. So I can't... I would never sell these off as trying to be real. I would never do that. Which is actually a good touch to show that these are reproduction. I'm happy with it. For the price I paid, some people are like, oh, you paid a little too much. No. You know what? The guy's trying to get by. These are This is a reproduction of a game that people do not want to spend $650 to. And it's way too high. Uh, Krill and I will say this. If you do catch up with K. I, he will take the time to make it make something like this, which is incredible, and I'm I'm happy for what I spent for this. So, how did the discs work? Okay, uh, let me let me explain. I have a Model Two U.S. Sega Saturn. Now, you can just get a Pro Action Replay, and you you can get the import of it, but it would be in Japanese. Uh, what you need to do is you'll have to do the disc swap method with a burned CD that you can get as a utility. And what it'll do is, if you do the swap disc right, or if you know somebody who has one of these, you can actually do it easily with one of them uh, to make another. And basically what it is, it's called Pseudo Saturn. A Pseudo Saturn cartridge. You use an action replay cartridge. This is why you're seeing action replay cartridges appear on eBay for stupid cheap now because they're being reproduced again because the demand of these are so high. Uh, so what you do is you, you you take the action replay cartridge, you put it into the memory slot, you do the disk swap method, or if you already have one that's made already, it will boot up a burned CD. So when you boot up this burned CD, you would there's certain instructions that you do that will erase the card of the action replay and turn it into pseudo Saturn. And when you turn it into pseudo Saturn, you get the perks of still having the uh, megabyte cartridge, which goes up to four megabytes. So you get all those perks. So you can still use it for that. And what you get to do is you get to play imports and you get to play burn games. Sure, I don't condone to piracy as much. I don't condone to piracy on new consoles. Condoning to piracy on older consoles, especially games that they don't have source ports anymore of, too bad. That's open game. So uh, that's that's uh, that's what I that's what I feel is right. And uh, I have to say, for the, the copy that he made there for me, I'm happy with it because there's no way in hell I'm going to pay six fifty seven hundred dollars for a copy of Panzer Dragoon Saga. So I will be happy with this. And I will definitely have to sit down and play it when I get the time. Let's see. So, here comes here comes one more, another heavy hitter that I got. I'm super happy to have this. You guys know that I'm a huge, huge Kojima fan, and uh, I am super happy to have this. And I'll have to get an English copy of it. Maybe I'll have to call Kay and see if he can hook me up. But I have here. Police Knots. And this is the Deluxe Police Knots, which is fully complete with Spine Card, with the Spine Card, with the art book, and the discs, with the stickers, everything. 
And let me tell you, this is incredible. Now I have Snatcher for the for the Saturn as well. So I have both of these. And man, I am super stoked to have this. And this uh, Kojima has stated is the definitive version to play, which I'm super happy to have. I don't know why. There we go. It's like, why is my case not closing? So I will need to get the English version of this. Uh, so I legally can play this. And uh, man, I cannot wait to play this. Especially I'm going to set it up with a stunner. So I'll have to bring out my CRT back there. Right back there. So I'll set it up with my CRT with a stunner, a stunner on standby. So when the light gun game comes up, I just use my stunner. Oh, that's going to be so much fun to play this. One more normal, no more, one more heavy hitter, and then three ultra hitters. So, another thing that made me super happy at this convention was the love of Neo Geo. And my God, I love me some Neo Geo. And I, you guys know I did a review on the Neo Geo MVS from AliExpress that's sitting over here on my cabinet. And uh, with this, I'm super happy to have. Uh, this is one of the games that are not on the collection that I wanted to get and so I was happy to get it I got it for cheap I think I paid like 40 or 50 dollars for it so it's an original it's an original case of it and that would be cross swords for the MVS so I get to play cross swords finally for the for the MVS so getting this is kind of cool. So I get to add this to my collection with my multi cart, my art of fighting, my samurai showdown, and my 2020 super baseball. So I am slowly, slowly collecting my my games. Now, mind you, this was going for more, but there is a corner that was busted on it. But it still works perfectly fine. He showed me, so I got to talk him down a couple bucks, and I got him down to forty dollars on this. So I'm happy. So another MVS game for the collection, which we will be streaming with that console soon. I just, just I just settled with just doing component with it because we have the OSSC and I'm not doing RGB through the OSSC. I'm just going to do component, which is like the second best thing. So no problem there. So we will do that. Okay. Here come the ultra hitters. So let us start with the two ultra hitters here. Night, Krillin. Have a good night, sir. Yeah, the plastic is a little brittle if you're not careful with them. But luckily, the cartridges that I do have are in fantastic shape. So no complaints there. So one of the main things I was looking for at Portland was a certain game that I want so bad. And Kins Increase, my good friend Joe Swope, Kins Increase, who's on here. If you haven't, if you haven't watched Kins Increase, go subscribe to him. Or go favorite his channel. He's really cool. I've known him since high school. We both have a passion for a certain game that we love. And I'm actually happy to have this. Now, mind you, it's disc only. But I was happy to get this disc only because it is super expensive. And that, my friends, is this. Let me set this over here. It's disc only. And this is actually from the Game Father, which I'm thankful to have it from them. Let me get the disc set up. And here it is. I have it. Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 Plus. This is the Plus Edition, which is totally worth it. The disc is in pretty good shape, so I'm actually happy with that. So, Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2 Plus. But that's not all. So, on top of that... Yes, there's a Plus Edition. The Plus Edition actually has extra content and uh, certain bugs and features that have been fixed. So here's the other thing I got. I'm just going to go ahead and open this bag and grab it. It's only one little piece, but it was the, it was the other main component that I needed. Well, 7090A uh, kid, you're going to have to hunt one of these down as well. You're going to probably have to join us online because... Uh, Kins Increase and myself and Billy Mac are probably going to stream this uh, 
you can still play. Oh, you do. There you go. You can still play this online. Broadband adapter. So I have the broadband adapter for my GameCube. So now, by their powers combined, we can play on Shathak. So now I can play on Shathak server. So we'll have this arranged to do it. And it looks like you may be our, yeah, you might be our fourth member. So uh, we'll have to do that, 79TA kid. We'll have to uh, we'll have to get a Skype call or a, uh, better yet, a Discord, just a private Discord room going so we can all talk while we're playing and we can all work together, for all four of us in our, in our group to do it. So this is it. This is the end of the road. This is my last heavy hitter, but this is the most expensive item that I actually have in my collection. And this is the most expensive hardware piece I have in my collection now for retro gaming. Well, no, no, I'll take that back. Second most expensive, because the most expensive is sitting up there. I have to move the camera again, I hate to do this. The second expensive, the most expensive hardware item is right up there. If you can see that, yes, that is a complete inbox of Steel Battalion for the Xbox. So. Here is the second most expensive thing I have now. And I'm super happy to have this. It's it is complete in box. There weren't very there was this was the only one I found in the convention, and I needed one so bad. I said screw it. I guess I'm just gonna have to pay the premium and get it. And I told myself I would have to get these. Yes, I did see the steel battalions that were set up. I was I, it would have been better. I think the only were playing the original steel battalion. They should have had line of contact modded. And yeah, they were Steel Battalions. They were. I uh, I didn't play it, but I've played Steel Battalion before. It's fun as fuck. I need to do a stream on that real bad. And then they should have had line of contact with them and those consoles soft modded so they could link them together and play versus 1v1. One ver one one. You could still play 1v1 one one with Steel Battalion with a certain game. And with X-Link Kai, you could still play the game online. So... What do I have here? Neo Geo CD controllers. These are hard as balls to find. And I've got the box with it. And I've got the controller. This is for my MVS. So now I have an official SNK MVS. Well, not MVS, but CD controller, which I prefer. With, oh, do you hear that? Do you hear that? You hear that? Cookie sticks are very hard to make. Yep, these have the click. Yep, it has micro switches. Although the price, I will let you guys know the price. Had to pay a premium, which sucks. Uh, but there is a gentleman who is helping me out. So I paid, where is it? Here's the bag. Ouch. I paid 150 for it. It sucks. But you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta pull the trigger to do it. But, uh... I have a gentleman through Reggie's stream who contacted me, who lives in Japan, and says, I will help you out with anything you need in Japan since you know Reggie. No problem. No, Hands down, I will help you with anything you need. And so I told him, keep an eye out in the wild. Go to the... Go to the the, uh, the book offs or uh, the off stores that sell games like this if you find a Neo Geo CD controller and junk for stupid cheap grab it and I'll give you my address and send you the funds via PayPal so not only that but there are some exclusive games I like to get as well and he'll, he will be my connection to get imports so I am super happy to do that that's another, another little perk I got for this convention so You know, since you brought that up, 7090A kid, that is on the list. I do want to do a Japan trip in the next five years. After talking with Kinsey and Adam uh, and Adam Korlick, uh, I am very tempted to do a Japanese tour, or at least a trip to Japan. Go to Kyoto and go to uh, go to uh, Tokyo as well. So. The most expensive thing you bought, let's see your control, uh, was a 3DS at 85 bucks. The most expensive game was Draconia for the 2600. Oh, you went to the, oh, I forgot, Atari Age was there. 
son of a bitch, I'm in that group. And uh, they've been helping me out with my Atari Lynx, you know, getting recommendations for the Atari Lynx. Oh, damn it, I feel bad. Did you guys go over to the uh, the Game Father uh, booth and did you check out the arcade machines they had there? The custom arcade machines of Mega Man, DuckTales, and Zelda? God, those were good. Those were amazing to look at. I loved those. Uh, what else was really cool to check out there? The swap beat was actually pretty neat. There were, you know, I had to find a Super a Super Mario. Oh, yeah, I am in Atari age. Just look for Zachary Maynard. And I'm in there. You can friend me on Facebook. I don't care. It's all good. Yeah, the arc those arcades are really cool. But mind you, they have a flash cartridge in them, but still getting to play like like uh, Mega Man in an arcade format is kind of cool. But seeing the Zelda, Zelda's like, oh my god, this is so good. Okay, okay, I'll catch you on there on on the Atari Age. And, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and just throw this in for the hell of it. As a reminder to you all, make sure you pack all of your items that you need to go on your trip because I was stupid. I forgot something here at home. I, uh, well, long story short, I forgot to pack my car, my, my, not my car charger, my cell phone charger for just to plug in so I can plug my stuff. And, uh, I had to buy a new car charger at the airport for 30 bucks stupid fucking me but hey you know what I got a new new nice it's 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 a modern one so it's it's actually better than the two chargers that I have especially the one that I got with my cell phone because I have a Moto G6 and it does turbo charging so I can have my cell phone charge within less than an hour met Al and spent a good time at the AA booth damn well, I'll tell you this. It, it It's more than likely official. If I get invited back by Riggs to crash with him or Reggie or somebody uh, for for next to nothing or for super cheap, I'm in. I'm totally in. I will definitely go back to Portland. I will plan this out again to go to Portland again. Yeah, 30 bucks for a hot dog at the expo. Ugh. Nah, like pretzels were like six dollars, sodas were like five bucks. I mean, they were making bank on that food. Nobody, pe nobody cared. Like, if you were hungry, if you needed something, you just paid there. But I, I mean, since I had VIP, I just went up to the VIP booth to grab a snack or, or water or a soda or juice. So sorry, but hey, I'm, I, I just still can't get over how much of a good time I have. And again, I'm, I am indebted to Riggs and Reggie so much. So, uh, but yeah, um, I do have one of these too. It's really nothing, but, oh, hot dogs were eight bucks. Why would you pay? That's like, that's like, that's like ballpark. <laughs> I think a hyper, everybody, a hyperkin was giving away bags. So I got a cloth bag for hyper from hyperkin. And then what's cool is I also have a, a hyperkin ba uh, badge care, like a lanyard. So I've got a hyperkin lanyard. Because Hyperkin representatives talk to me for a little bit. I really, really wish that Hyperkin would fix their Retron 5 so that the ports on those would, would not crap out. Because my, my, my Retron 5 is about to crap out. I've had it for two years. Unless somebody makes replacement pins for them. Which I bet, bet you they do, but it, you got to solder them as well, I guess. Which is going to suck. Ugh. Honestly, the trick, if there's any advice I would give to anybody who goes to Portland, um, don't plan on eating there. Really, don't don't plan on eating there. Um, there's so much around the area that you could just walk to whatever you need to get to. And, uh, I mean, there was a subway up the road. There was a Denny's. There was a Wendy's. There was uh, Spirit 77s just like across the street, which is they've got good food and great beer. So that's nothing wrong there. <laughs> Trade you for my Retron 5. I might take you up on that. What do you got good, huh? Uh, what else? Um, what else? What else? There's everything you need in that vicinity of that city is within walking distance. 
and as long as you can put up with the bums and even funnier <laughs> I, I don't like to get political but there was an Antifa there was somebody for Antifa who was up the road and he was trying to get his hey girl he's talking to some girl he's like hey girl let's go right in my bike and I'm like oh I'm sorry but uh, the Crown Plaza where we stayed in was a very nice hotel so I give that the Maynard seal of approval. That was a very nice hotel to stay in. Um, um, really? I can't think of anything else except for, I think next time when I plan my flights, I'm probably going to get there a day earlier and then leave a day later on uh, like I'll fly in on a Thursday and leave on a Monday. I bet my plane tickets would be a little cheaper. And on top of that, the flight connections would be easier to get to. Because when I flew there, I got to my from from St. Louis to San Francisco, my gate for my for my San Francisco to Portland was opening in 15 minutes, which gets me a little worried. I guess time time restrictions are kind of like Ugh. so so I had to book it from one side of the terminal to the other side of the terminal to get to it. It took me like 10 minutes to walk over, and they were just opening the gate. But on the way back was really stressful. So flying from Portland to San Francisco, we had a 40 minute delay. And so when we got to San Francisco, my gate for my plane was open already. They had already called my group and I had at least five minutes left to get on my plane. And I luckily made it there in time. Sucks is I didn't get to go to the bathroom and get food, but on the flight home, because it was like a five plus hour flight, uh, they, they admitted that they were having problems that day with connection flights and stuff. So the first thing they did is the flight that I was on, they had TV screens, which was a first. I've never been on a plane that actually had TV screens you can watch TV with. So they, uh, they enabled TV for everybody for free. And they said everybody was having a complimentary dinner. So I got a free dinner out of it. So I got a, uh, I've got a chicken Parmesan sandwich and a free Coke. And it was actually really good. Actually, it was not bad. Because you, you hear airline food, you're like, oh, God, don't get the fish. Don't get the fish. The chicken Parmesan sandwich on those flights, not bad. Not bad. I approve it. So, yeah. So what's really cool is on the way home. I got to watch the F1 race here that happened here in the United States. And I also watched Deadpool. I watched Deadpool 2 for free of charge. So I, I thought I was going to be sleeping the whole time. But no, the, the watching the F1 race killed like two hours. And then I watched Deadpool 2 and, and it, it killed the other two hours on the flight. Because it was like a it was over four, four hours below five hours. It was like a four hour and 30 minute flight. I've never been on a plane that long, too, which is like, holy crap, that's a long flight. I could not imagine doing an international. Did you watch any My Little Ponies? They did have Cartoon Network and Boomerang and all that. It was a direct TV, basically. You could watch whatever you wanted that was on direct TV. So I I, I technically could, but no, I, I watched I watched the F1 race, which was actually pretty exciting to watch. Uh, poor, uh, who was it? Who was the driver? Uh, drove for Mercedes. He, he, uh, kind of crapped out. Portland to Love Field in Dallas. The flight was under four hours. Yeah, it's about, it's about the same distance from Portland to Dallas where it is from San Francisco to St. Louis. So, but yeah, um, my goodness, I really have nothing else to say. Except for I will treasure this weekend and I'm kind of excited to go back to work. I go back to work on Thursday, so I only have a two day work week and I've done very well for this month. Am I ready for Halloween? Uh, the most important question. Hmm. I am. I am ready for Halloween. Unfortunately, I will be working, but we do have a Halloween contest at my at my work. I think I'm going to do my my costume like last year, but make it more 80s. Maybe I'll be like some street gang member from the 80s. So I'm going to get my leather jacket and and bleached be bleached jeans and stuff and, and like put a bandana on my head or something. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I had an awesome time. 79 TA kid. You out? All right, man.
I'll catch you online, my my meme lord friend. Don't be an asshole. I hate you for what you messaged. I was scared half to death since you since you messaged me that, you fuckhead. God, uh, 79TA kid, I'm going to kill him next time I see him. He messages me on the flight, and I'm just getting off my flight, and my my message, he messaged me, set, he goes, set, push the button a la Akbar. I'm like, you fucking piece of shit. You're an asshole. Yeah, you're an asshole for that. Don't swear. Well, I'm going to swear because, man, if... Oh, man, I could have gotten in so much trouble for that. You... Man. Thanks, you probably put me on a list, too, so I'll probably have to get patted down my next flight. Aloha snack snack bar. Aloha snack bar. That's what, it sh that's what you should have said. Aloha snack bar. Remember that. Aloha snack bar. So, alrighty, folks. I'm glad that everybody came in tonight. So, I'm going to play one of my favorite songs from Mega Ran himself. So, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, hit the links down below in social media. Uh, you will. You can get a hold of me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube on the recap, you can see the description down below. And I've got Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. So, streaming will continue next week. Um, I don't know what we're going to be playing, but we'll play something. But we're going to get we're getting closer and closer once we get past extra life next month with uh, Zero Shift and his team. Uh, Zero Shift, Gigas Bound, Taste Color, and all of them are going to be with me. I'm going to be with them actually, so because I'm representing Team Team Zero Shift, yo. Uh, uh, we'll probably start Zelda here within the next month. And then we have the Thanksgiving special, Christmas, and New Year specials. So, all right, everyone, I'm out. Stay fresh, stay clean, have fun. I will see you all next e weekend. Thank you so much for coming in. Control issue, 79TA kid, Sherry Boomer, John Riggs, Cody DS Koopa, which he's about to hop on his stream. So, I might actually send over to raid him. Uh, how do you do that? How do you raid somebody? Uh, goodness, go to go to DS Koopa. I would highly recommend watching him. Uh, so let me let me put that in the chat here. Let me let me copy this real quick. So hit that link. Go say go say hey Maynard says what's up. Go over to his channel. He's really cool. So he's he's at the store right now, and uh, and uh, say hey, Maynard told us to came come over to join you. So I'm gonna be coming over there to go check him out as well. So, but everyone, have a good night. Have a good weekend. Thank you again so much for coming in tonight. We're gonna listen in for the rest of the song for from Mega Man Mega Ran with my favorite track, Splash Woman. So I will catch you all later. Stay fresh and stay clean. She be my miss, she said, don't be foolish, you gotta do this Let the whole city know what the truth is Boy, you got stuff to do I said, girl, I would've gave it all up for you I feel invincible when I'm holding you But as far as love goes, I'm over two I thought I was in love before, but I love you more So baby, come aboard and go away with me So I can make you see what you mean to me And baby, we can be free